just glad that we can come and be a part of uh, this worship service. We're finishing our Star Wars um, our, our Star Wars series. Keith will be preaching this morning, and I hope you can come next week for our confirmation service. It is going to be outstanding. We're going to be led by our confirmands that have been meeting since the fall, um, and, and they're going to lead us into worship next week as they uh, join our church and this congregation. Um, but again, we're just glad to have you here. We've got snacks and coffee in the back. Please make sure you get those um, if you need some anytime during the service. We also have um, Impact Day signups are going on in the back. There's a list back there. It tells kind of which areas are full and not full. So if you haven't signed up for that, please sign up for that. Um, and again, we're just glad you're here. We're glad that we can be in this spot and we can um, we can just worship God. So let's all stand up as we. Uh, we're going to sing our faith this morning. Let's lift our voices up as one. United Methodist Church in our awakening service this morning. My name is Michael Blackburn, one of the staff members here, and we are so glad to have you guys here this morning on this holiday weekend. Um, we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Summer is when we really start cranking up here at First Methodist, uh, but some general announcements for this week. Uh, the preschool is closed tomorrow. There's no youth tonight uh, because of the holiday weekend, um, but starting next week, we've got all kinds of stuff that are happening. We've got Impact Day, and we still have spots that are open. I, see, I saw Carrie back there earlier. I sh someone will be back there from the mission team after to sign up for that. If you don't know what Impact Day is, what happens on next Saturday, there'll be a breakfast in here in the morning uh, that Methodist men will provide. We'll all come in. We'll get some red shirts. 
And there are service community places that we can go throughout uh, the town of Waynesville. We'll do things like painting, singing at nursing homes, lawn care. There's all sorts of stuff, any kind of skill you can do. And we're going to just go out into the community. Uh, we've got uh, Kevin Murphy has helped us get all those places all lined up. If you haven't signed up or you want to know more about that, they'll be in the hallway on the way out when, when you go there. And that's next Saturday uh, morning. So we hope everyone can participate in that who can. Uh, the next Sunday, uh, on June, uh, that first Sunday in June, I am so excited. We've got a great confirmation class. There's almost, I think, 21, 22 has been going through the, the um, been meeting with George Thompson, Keith, John Patrick, and Matthew um, since the fall. And they have gone on retreats, and they have put a lot of time and energy into what it means to be a follower of Christ, what it means to take hold of um, of their own Christian journey and what it means to be a member here at this church at First Methodist. And so next week, uh, they're going to be joining the church. And not only are they going to be uh, uh, participating in that way, uh, but they're going to be leading us in, in worship, leading us in, in their time here. Uh, so it's going to be a great Sunday. I hope everyone can come next Sunday um, and be there, uh, be here uh, as they come and they get confirmed here next Sunday. We also... Um, also, it's hard to believe that next Sunday is also pig picking. So if you haven't signed up for that, I hope you can. Pig picking is awesome. We've got a barbecue. I think we've got a brand new barbecue truck that's coming in this time. Uh, hopefully it won't rain, um, which it always does, but hopefully it won't. And we'll have all our bouncies outside and barbecue outside. If not, we'll have it in here. Uh, we got Whitewater, uh, does a great, Bluegrass does a great job uh, kind of energizing uh, the crowd, we have Jenny Neighbors, who's also going to be a DJ here. It's just a great party uh, to get us started in the beginning of the year. It's, it's a free barbecue meal. Hope that everyone can come. This is a great way if you have a friend that you'd like to invite and get them to participate in something. If there's a family um, in your in your neighborhood that you're like, man, it would be awesome if they could come to VBS this year or Bible Times. This is a great event to bring uh, bring them to. If there's someone that you've been wanting to just kind of be a part of this church family, uh, next that next Sunday would be a great time to bring them at pig picking um, as we get closer to that. Uh, we also have Vacation Bible School or Bible Times. Uh, we're going to Athens this year. Uh, we're real excited about that. We're going to transform all of this. The interns have already started working. I saw the set pieces yesterday um, as we start doing that. But I know we have plenty of kids who signed up, but we need a ton of helpers with that. Um, there's ways that you can do that online, but you can also find Rachel Cease, and I bet she would um, quickly get you where you need her to go. And if you, if you have kids that you'd like to have signed up, please uh, find her. Uh, those are the announcements that I have. Is there anything uh, that we can, anything else we need to bring up or anything that I missed? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. I, yes, this is, this is an important announcement this morning. So, yeah, yeah. So what, what 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 Bert's saying is that the bishop has appointed Keith to be the minister here in the community of Waynesville, where there happens to be a church here, and so we're excited to have uh, Keith to be here next year. So, so good. So we didn't lose any pastors this year. That's awesome, right? All right, well, those are good announcements. Those are good things. And, uh, again, this is great to be here this morning. Let's all stand and uh, greet one another with the peace and love of Christ. song be our call to worship this morning saying there's power here in this hour we're all together 
Let our worship not just be about us and God, but with one another today. Oh, hold on, hold on. I can't, I can't sing it there. Sorry. Thank you. So we could probably cut this from the YouTube thing and I could say everything I just said there, but uh, we won't. Now that I'm in the right key, we'll let this be our call this morning, saying that we're all here together. There is power. There is power, power. Here in this hour, this hour. And we're all together, together, waiting here at one. Let's sing those words again and sing them out. There is power, power. Here in this hour, this hour. And we're all together, together, waiting.
which leads me to let's hear your voices you make everything glorious you make everything glorious you make everything glorious and I am yours what does that make small, but they have seen the beauty of enormous things, which leads me to got done with making the mountains and the trees and all the colors of the earth, Lord. And you say, well, that's, that's good, but not good enough. And you reach down into yourself. And from that, you created us, Lord. And not just to be here to exist, but to participate, Lord. And we just pray that this morning that we can, we can fall into that calling of our life, Lord. We can think of the places in our lives that we need help, that we can ask for it, people in our lives that need help, Lord, that we can go out and help them, Lord, just be with us in our worship. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper
Children would come up front and join Miss Rachel. Is that it? There we go. You've been working hard this morning. I love it. Yeah, we're going. Let's sit on the floor and off the steps. I think we've had some close calls on the steps. So sit down here with me, girly. All right. I know you've heard a lot of stories from my childhood, but I have another one for you today. Um, you know, some of you may know this, but my mom is a teacher, or, or she was a teacher. She just retired, and some of you even had her as a kindergarten teacher, but. But the life of a mother with a teacher can be, yeah, hard. Long days at Hazelwood Elementary. And so after school at Hazelwood, my mom was always still working. and She would work and work and work. And so I and, and my sister Eliza and my brother Jackson would run all over the school before they changed the rules playing. Um, we, you know, we might be in another teacher's classroom playing with their things. We might be out on the playground. We might be playing hide and seek. And then my friend Catherine Messer, she also, um, she, her mom also worked at Hazelwood. So we would play with her. Well, we would be playing and, um, and I had no idea what time it was. And all of a sudden, this voice would come and say, Rachel sees your mother is looking for you. And it was over the intercom. And so the whole school knew that my mom was looking for me. And I would, I'd be so embarrassed. And, um, and, and it would say, your mother, your mother needs you to come to the office immediately. I know. <laughs> it was bad news. And, um, and so, of course, I would go to the office. you know, And this happened day in and day out. Rachel sees. And it reminded me when, when Mr. Mike told me what the sermon was going to be about. I thought of that story because the thing is, God calls us the same way that I was called when I was younger. Almost as if there's an intercom in a sea of people. He's calling your name. He calls each one of us. And says, you are my child. And that's kind of what my mom was saying to me. You are my child. You belong with me. I need you. And that's what God says. You are mine. I love you. I need you. And I ask you to share my love with others. Can you imagine that? Close your eyes and just imagine. Over an intercom, your name is called. You are mine. I love you. And I need you. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. You and you and you and you and everybody in here. Isn't that great? So let's pray together. And sometimes it's hard to know what to do with that. Right? So let's pray and, and we'll ask God to, to lead us in that calling that he, that he sends for us. God, I'm amazed at how special you make each one of us feel. What a, what a feeling it is to be called out in a crowd of people 
all worthy. You call our names. And I ask for your, your guidance. We ask that you show us what, what it looks like to follow that calling, what it looks like to be your child and to, to show others um, how wonderful you are. Amen. Our children walk back to their seats. We'll ask the ushers to come forward as we give our gifts back. Good morning, everyone. How are you this morning? This is our time to come together and join in prayer and share our concerns and our joys. I do want to mention a couple of things. We had two deaths this week in our church. Lillian Allen passed away. Also, Barry Rogers passed away. His wife is uh, Mary Neal. Additionally, uh, many of you know Dan and Kay Southern. They were in an accident a couple of weeks ago and are at home, but still uh, a lot of healing to be done in that family as uh, they're both still um, suffering from their injuries. 
What other prayer concerns or joys might we have today? Yes, Mary Annabelle is, uh, is the new director of Wilderness Trail, and this will be her first summer as the director there and leading the uh, hikers. And that's a great ministry that this church supports, as well as a great leadership development for youth. Um, so thank you, Annabelle, for what you're doing. Yes. Please be in prayer for Dorothy and her family as her father is um, uh, going through the process of dying. So be with them. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do have a lot of members coming back from Scotland right now. They had a wonderful trip, evidently, but let's be in prayer for all those who are traveling. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Lord, you've heard those joys and those concerns that we've expressed here, and we know that you listen to them. And we know that we pray for these that are part of our family. Lord, help us to recognize those others in our community that are in need. We don't know. Those that are hurting, those that are sick, those that are suffering. And beyond our community within our state, our country, this world, there are so many out there in need. And Lord, we know that you are the good, good father of us. And if you're the father of us, you're the father of those in our community those in our state, our nation, and this world, and beyond. And if you're their father and our father, then are our brothers and our sisters. And Lord, help us to look after our family, those within this church, in this town, in this state, country, and world. And help us to conform to what your will would be with everyone in this world accepting those that are different, loving those that are different, caring for those that are different. Help us to lead the way into being the family that you would have us to be. Thank you for this church and what it does, the outreach programs, and the things that the individuals do to make this world better and to make us all one family. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so here we are, the last week of Star Wars. We talked about Han Solo two weeks ago, who was a good character, but the protagonist in, in the original trilogy. And there's no way I could have, I mean, as a kid, uh, I always wanted to be Luke Skywalker. I want to be able to move things, tell my parents to do something different than I wanted them to do with that, or be able to, you know, uh, stop my, my brothers and sister from talking from across the room by doing that. But it'd be great, right? Those would have been fun powers to have. Uh, Luke Skywalker... I uh, was going through adolescence in, in the movie, and, and, and you got to kind of see him. You know, he's always kind of looking out. He knew that there was something bigger that he wanted to be a part of um, than, than what was there, and I think that's why he's always sort of, um, you know, he's always been one of those characters that everyone's kind of drawn to. Now, we have a little video here, and for those people in 1980 have, did not see Empire Strikes Back, and you're like, I, I want to be unspoiled by that movie whatsoever. You might want to close your ears for one little part about who Darth Vader is. If you don't care who that is, that's fine. But there's a little spoiler that's going to come out in this. I don't want that to, I don't want to ruin your, your experience. Like, well, I didn't know I was going to watch all the movies this afternoon. I was waiting until the sermon series was over. So if you didn't know that, you just go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But this is, uh, this is who Luke Skywalker is. The force is strong in my family. My father has it. I have it. My sister has it. The Force? Now, the Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's the energy between all things, the tension, the balance that binds the universe together. But what is it? Close your eyes. I'm 
act on instinct. I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi like my father. It's time for the Jedi to end. The Force is with you, young Skywalker. I've seen this raw strength only once before. A young Jedi named Darth Vader. He betrayed and murdered your father. No. I am the father. I'm Luke Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Cruiser. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You want only help. Luke, run away. Far away. But why must you confront him? Because there is good in him. I felt it. I failed you, Ben. I'm sorry. I'll never turn to the dark side. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Falcon. Wait. Where's Han? Tomorrow, at dawn. Three lessons. I will teach you the ways of the Jedi and why they need to end. Stop that. I was really excited to get that letter myself. Our scripture text for today is from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day recalling your tears I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. You then, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me through many witnesses, entrust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. I don't know if, uh, if you know of St. Ignatius of Loyola, maybe the name is familiar to you. Uh, he and a small group of friends founded the Society of Jesus, which maybe is more, familiar, is more familiarly known as the Jesuits. Um, the, uh, the Jesuits are still around today, and it's actually one of my spiritual practices is to go to a Jesuit, a Jesuit website out of England called prayasyougo.org. Um, where monks will sing to you and British people with cool accents will read scripture to you. And, um, well, uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola started the movement um, that is still alive today. He was an expert in the art of spiritual direction. Uh, he wrote this book called The Spiritual Exercises. And it's a, a collection of, of his insights, of his prayers, of his suggestions, and Uh, This book became one of the most influential books on spirituality or spiritual life 
uh, that was ever written. Well, he was born in 1491, and he was one of, of 13 kids, and his family, um, they were of, of minor nobility in, in northern Spain. And so, as a young man, I imagine like uh, many young men in that, in that day and, and time, he was just inflamed by these ideals of, of knighthood and of courtly love and of doing these great deeds for, for his family and, and for uh, you know, his country or, or his region. And, and he also loved to read romance novels. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, but he, he gave his life to, to the military. And uh, he was in this battle um, serving with this duke, and the French were invading. And as the story goes, as they were in invading this town, uh, the duke was, was kind of gripped by a, a good bit of fear and cowardice and just fled with he and his men. Um, but Ig Ignatius, um, he hung in there. You know, we, we can't just leave these just to leave these people behind, and, and so uh, discovered this gift that he had to, to rally people and to organize them, and, and he had this p potential in him. Wasn't all that uh, much of a soldier, <laughs> uh, but he could lead people. And in this battle, as they're holding their ground, a, a, the French fire a cannon and the cannonball goes, goes over the, the top of the castle, the parapet, wherever he was, and it kind of rips through his leg, and he was gravely injured. The French, captures the, the French capture the town, and um, they're gracious to him, and they allow him to be, to be carried off uh, as, as a wounded leader. And so he's in this castle, and, and he's, he's recovering from this, this wound, and he wants to read a romance novel. He says, could you bring me a romance novel? <laughs> and um, there's not a single romance novel in the castle. So what they bring him is they bring him a book that is about the life of Jesus and the saints. And so Ignatius of Loyola experienced this, this dramatic uh, conversion and this uh, stirring began to happen deep in his soul. And I think um, probably the biggest thing that happened to him was he, he began to be drawn into this, this new narrative one that was much bigger than himself. Uh, but then he came, like, that I think often happens with us, he became eaten up with this idea of, of making himself perfect in God's sight. You know, there's a little bit of John Wesley in that too. Uh, there was a method to this thing. And so we can attend to, to these rules and these commandments and these regulations. Um, so... So Ignatius was, was, was swept up in this, and one of the things that he would do is he would, he would search out people, spiritual people, um, so, that, so that he could just spend time with them and, and talk with them and maybe show off a little bit of his knowledge and prowess, but also with this idea of I'm going to make myself perfect, I'm going to make myself better. And so he, he went out one day from Barcelona looking for such a person, and, and before he got to, to Manresa, he met this very old woman, and he was startled by what she said to him. Um, after some time together, I guess after her getting some kind of sense of who he was, uh, she said to him, may our Lord Jesus Christ appear to you one day. <laughs> and he's like, huh? How can Jesus appear to me? Almost like this, I've been there, done that. You know, my experience, and maybe your experience too, is that when, when Jesus appears, when God's presence become real, it changes everything. So when Paul says to Timothy, join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to God's own purpose and grace. He's saying to Timothy, and he's saying to me, and he's, he's saying to all of us, I think, that there's something bigger going on here. There's a bigger story. It, it's the power of God that saves us, and not only saves us, but that, but that calls us to, to this bigger thing. It's not about me. It's not about my dreams. It's not about the things that I can do. Uh, but it's about God and this God who calls all of us to a higher purpose. In, 
In Star Wars, they, they refer to this as, as the Force. Uh, we saw um, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi de describing it to Luke Skywalker. Uh, something begins to stir inside of him. Obi-Wan tells him, Luke, the Force is strong in your family. And Luke begins to, uh, to, to realize uh, his family's role in, in this larger drama. And it, and it, and it happens to him. I, I, I need to, to be a part of this thing. He becomes gripped with this, with this passion to be a part of this bigger thing, to fight uh, the injustices of, of the empire. You know. and so he does. I was thinking about this, this letter of Paul to Timothy, this, this truth that God calls us to this, to this holy calling. And my question is, well, what is that holy calling? What is our holy calling in this drama that we're in the middle of, in this life that we're living I wonder this, especially in these days that we're living in. You know, it just seems that our society and even our church is polarized. We're, we're so deeply divided. I think Becky gave us the answer last week when she talked about community. I think it's a calling to community. Um, you know, in, in the Star Wars saga... There is this sharp contrast between the Galactic Empire's forces and, and uh, uh, the forces of the Rebel Alliance. And so we know this, the, the stormtroopers. Uh, you, you probably know uh, that they're actually an, an army of clones. Uh, in the second movie, which is really the fifth movie, we follow young Obi-Wan Kenobi um, uh, to the planet of Kamino. Uh, Kamino is this lonely planet world uh, beyond the, the outer rim. It's a planet of endless oceans and storms. Um, the Kaminoans were cloners. That's what they did. Uh, and they were contracted by the, the Sith uh, to, to clone what ended up to be uh, Jango Fett uh, into an army. Um, and they made millions of him. And I know some of you have said, maybe more in the other services than in this service, but, you know, like, this is, this is really cool. I think I'll start watching some of these movies. And um, one person said, you know, you're, you're spoiling it for me. You're spoiling it for me. I haven't seen them. And I'm like, well, you're 40 years behind. <laughs> so I'm not taking a whole lot of responsibility for that. Um, but when you do begin to watch these, and you notice these stormtroopers are, I think, pretty much in all of them, they're iconic um, white armor, um, they're all the same. And even if you notice, if you pay attention, um, that in the, in the Imperial Army, uh, especially under Emperor Palpatine's reign, um, it's staffed entirely by, by white male human officers. They're all the same. The rebels, on the other hand, uh, they are this, this ragtag group um, there's humans, there's, there's Han Solo who's, who's white, there's Lando Calrissian who, who is black, there's, uh, uh, there are droids, there are Wookiees, there, there are Gungans, there are Bothans and Ewoks, um, on and on and on. Uh, my favorite character is Admiral Akbar. Uh, he's a member of the Mon Calamari species, and he's the one that looks just like a fish. So when you watch it, you'll know um, it's the fish guy. But the thing about the Star Wars movies that runs pretty much through it, I think, one of, the, one of the things is that homogeneity is synonymous with evil. And what is this evil? I think it's the breakdown of community. Uh, there is also in there this desire to, to rule the world and to oppress people. But there's this temptation to just live to ourselves. To live in, in isolation, in, in, in an echo chamber with people who look just like us and act just like us and believe just like us and dream just like us. In my opinion, if we take the narrative of the whole of Scripture, which we have to do, this whole book is our book, um, then I believe we see that community is what we're called to. That ultimately that's at, at the very heart of it. Um, Jesus was asked point blank about this. It was in a conversation about rules and regulations, about doctrine, um, about commandments. And, you know, it's this question, which is, which is uh, the, the greatest commandment? In other words, what is, what is the highest thing that God wants from us? What is God's highest calling for us? And, and if, you're, 
you know, some of you may be brand new to church and you're brand new to the Bible, um, and, and so, so you might, might not know the answer to this, but I would, I would guess three-fourths of you already know Jesus' response to this question, that it's love. God's highest calling for us is love. It's love God and love your neighbor. And, and I think another way of saying that in, in our context um, is love your neighborhood. Love your neighborhood. Love your community. And then when we go back in the biblical narrative, kind of towards the very beginning in Genesis chapter 12, that's when God approaches Abraham. And God says, I will be God to you. And I want you to be my people. It's this, it's this amazing invitation. I will be your God, and you will be my people. And then God begins talking about Abraham's family. Well, Abraham was old, and he was not able to have, have kids, and he was just resigned to he and his wife Sarah having no family. There was no hope there. But when God shows up, and when God's presence becomes real, there's all kinds of hope in the face of those things that we, we might call impossible. And, and God says, because of you, and because of your family, and because I will be in the center of your family. God says, all the families of the earth will be blessed. All the families of the earth will be blessed. And you know, uh, there was a sign of this covenant. They cut a covenant, and literally, um, circumcision was the sign of that. Obviously, that was just for, for male boys, for boys eight days old, but, but underlying that, the significance of that, what we'll see next week in baptism as the confirmation class joins the church and is baptized, is this is what marks us as God's people. So this was no small thing. Well, Timothy was of, of a mixed race. His, his mama was a Jewish woman. His daddy was, was Greek. And, and Paul meets him um, in Acts chapter 16. And, and what happens is, is that, that Paul sees the potential in him, recognizes him as a leader, uh, someone who could go with him. And so, so he, he recruits him to that. Um, and, and then he, he promptly has him circumcised, which might not seem odd to you, but it's interesting to me because of what has just happened in the story in, in the, the book of Acts. What's happening in the book of Acts is that... that after Jesus' death and resurrection, persecution happens and the church is scattered and, they, and they're, they're going all over the place. They're literally going to the ends of the earth as Jesus told them to. The Spirit sometimes has to nudge them a little bit. And they're encountering the power, the Spirit of the living God, moving in ways with people they've never seen before. And, and, and these were Gentiles. They weren't Jews. They were not circumcised, and so that was one of the big questions, and, and it was a real problem in the church. It's like there are all these Gentiles who were coming into the church. And, and so in, in Acts 15, it says, Certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. That's a pretty, that's a pretty harsh thing to say, but that was what they believed. <laughs> and it says there was no small debate. I liken it to... A leadership team meeting or an annual conference meeting or a general conference where they're, they're uh, debating this hotly because there's they're strong convictions about these matters. And they all give testimony to their experience. Peter sh shares his experience. Paul shares his. How God's spirit is moving and we can't deny what God is doing. And so, you know, their decision was, and they said to the Gentiles, y'all don't have to be circumcised. That was a big deal. That was a major scriptural, theological, and cultural change. Why did they do something like that? It's because they realized what they would say in Star Wars, there is this, there is this force, there is this something bigger, this is the spirit of the living God was moving on them in such a way uh, that, that they realize the inclusion of the Gentiles, the inclusion of all people was the way of Jesus, and therefore it had to be the way of the church. So it's interesting to me, after all of that has happened, in, uh, leading up to chapter 15, that in chapter 16, when, when Paul meets Timothy, uh, he asks Timothy to be circumcised. Why would he do that, was the question that I had. 
And in Acts chapter 16, verse 3, it says, Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and had him circumcised because of the Jews who were in those places. Because the Jews matter. The church was growing so fast, and I'm sure it just had to be really crazy at times. And it was important for everyone to know that no one was going to be left behind. It, it was this vision of, of God's community that everyone on the planet, everyone in the galaxy, matters. So I, I went to F3. Um, we have an F3 group in Waynesville. Uh, half the guys are, are, are members of First United Methodist Waynesville. F3 stands for Faith, Fellowship, and Fitness. It's a fitness group. And so I showed up. Um, it's at 7 o'clock. Starts right on time, ends right on time at 8 o'clock, and the, circled up in the parking lot across from the middle school. And, you know, it's a tough group of guys. I'm one of the oldest. Um, they're younger, stronger, faster. They're beastie kind of men, you know. And so you, you do some exercise. It's, it's, it's an hour of exercise. Like not, it's nonstop. Maybe, like, they'll, this is, we'll take a, we're going to take a break. Somebody count down from 10. <laughs> so you get a 10-second break every now and again. It's amazing how long that 10 seconds seems. Um, so we're, we do bear crawls. I have bear crawl nightmares sometimes. We, we do sit-ups, and, and we, we do push-ups, and we sprint forwards, and we, we sprint backwards. And um, we did this wheelbarrow crawl, which means that someone holds your feet up off the ground while you're on your hands and you crawl up the stadium steps at the football stadium. And at one point, I wondered if I was going to come out of it alive. Uh, Ted Adams was the leader, and he was celebrating these last days of being 50, and so 50 was the theme. And I knew when he said that at the beginning that I was going to be in trouble. And the, the, the time ended with 50 burpees. If you don't know what a burpee is, Google that and then try to do 50. <laughs> at about five, I knew at that point that I was going to die and was not going to live to be here today. Uh, after the, the workout, we circled up for announcements and prayer. And so, so the announcements started kind of in similar crazy fashion to the workout. Like today is a, a Sunday fun day run day. I, unfortunately, am not going to be able to make it. Um, it sounds like they're going to run through like a laurel thicket and get some, you know, get to the, uh, there was no mention of machetes to get there, so I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Get to the Blue Ridge Parkway and then just run straight uphill for, for however long. Um, tomorrow morning is what's called the Murph, and Murph was a soldier who, uh, who we remember today on Memorial Day, gave his life for his country, and his workout was run a mile, and I'll get this wrong, but it's 100 pull-ups, 200 sit-ups, and 300 of something, um, and then run another mile. And they're doing that tomorrow morning at 7. Any of these events, I'm sure if, if you would like to be a part of that, you would be welcome. <laughs> so then the announcements took a turn. We're gathering food for Head Start, he said. So if you can bring some non-perishable items, you know, like ramen noodles or a can of tuna or a ravioli. It's for Head Start. These, these families in our community need, need our help. And then I, I learned from the next announcement that our F3 group is, is building a ramp for the Pigeon Center, the multicultural center down the street because they need a ramp. And I didn't ask Shane's permission to share this, but um, then Shane Herring began to, to share about a vision that he has for Pathways. Um, I, I actually was moved to tears, and I, I thought, I better not cry in this group. <laughs> um, you know, the Haywood Pathways Center is not even two miles down the street. It's a, it's a place that provides uh, adult and family emergency shelter. It's a halfway house for, for men and for women who have, have recently been released from prison. There are, are short-term residential programs. Uh, there, there's also a, a, a long-term program for individuals that want to seek transformation. Uh, there's a, there's a, a community kitchen that, that provides meals, and, and many of you have helped serve in those. Um, and Shane began to share what he saw. And I think, I didn't ask Shane this, I think it's because of what Shane has experienced 
in his F3 community. He says, we need to have an F3 group for these guys. So that they're not alone. So that they can know that they're a part of our community. And, th and that's the place where I, I felt like I wanted to start crying. This idea about one person coming alongside another person so that they might be able to, to see something of the love of God. Something of their potential. That they not only belong to this community, but that, that God has called them uh, to, to something. I, I, I saw an example of, of God's holy calling and our potential to save the galaxy through that. You know, like Paul to Timothy, it's all in this. He says, I, I see in you. It was in your grandmother Lois. It was in your mother Eunice. And I see this in you. This sincere, this genuine faith, this potential. So rekindle this gift. Because the power of God will use you. You know, Qui-Gon Jinn saw something in, in young Anakin Skywalker, this potential to be this great Jedi. And I don't have to be the, the spoiler alert because the video already did it. Even when he comes or goes to the dark side and becomes Darth Vader... His son, Luke Skywalker, continues to see this potential, continues to have hope because he sees the person that he is. And, and he even says there's still good in him over and over again. There's still good in him. And he's right. And there's hope for us, too. I don't know how often any of you feel hopeless because I think these days it can be easy to, not only with what's going on in our society, but just with the questions about our United Methodist Church. I believe that when we see people as God sees people, and when we realize God is calling us to them, that we'll also know that we're better together. And that all means all. And so Paul says in his letter to Timothy, God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Jesus before the ages began. Let us pray. God, we just pray that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, that has been moving over darkness and chaos from the beginning of time, that has moved through the generations of the Old Testament and burst into this world through the life of Jesus, you disturbed and stirred and called disciples who saw potential in people and who shared the hope through your power. And the story continued. I think about next Sunday, Lord, when our confirmation class will stand before us. As we, as a congregation, as, as parents, as siblings, have tried to pour our lives into them, that there is great hope for us because the story continues and it will continue. Help us to see people that as we see and experience you and your love, that we'll see that in others and have the courage to lift their potential, to live together, to be this community that you dream we'd be. We ask for your blessing and your life in Christ's name. Amen. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, it's our time to welcome the Sund family into membership today. And we are excited to receive them. Um, it was important that they joined as a family. Um, the church this morning, Reese is going to be baptized and confirmed next week. Um, but they wanted to become members first, so I'd like for you all to come on up. 
Um, their family came to this church um, because of Reese, because of her desire to be in the youth program and the fire that God lit in her heart on mission trip um, last year. And so we're happy to have them here um, and call them our family. Um, so let me introduce them to you. This is Tara, son, her mom. This is Reese, who we baptize and confirm next week. This is her sister, Avery, whom I've met one time, perhaps, but it's nice to see you, and Richie, father. So we're delighted to have them. And they're transferring members membership from First Baptist Church in Franklin. So, so I, haven't gotten, I haven't gotten to know all of you yet, but I've, <laughs> uh, Reese has been an awesome part of our class. And so one of the things that um, I like to remind us, um, or one of the things I guess that makes me excited is that having uh, journeyed with us a little bit, you've, you've decided that this is where you want to be uh, a follower of Christ, and that you want to journey with us. So that there's uh, this, this sense of, uh, I feel like you're choosing us in a way, and, and I feel loved, and I think all of us feel that and appreciate that, um, but that we have this responsibility to, to be the church together, and especially as confirmation happens next week, we realize the, the importance of that. Um, and so there's a, a couple of questions that we want to ask you, and they will be on the, they will be on the screen. Huh? We don't have... Okay. So, this is an ad lib... <laughs> To, to our questions. Um, and it's essentially this. You know, when we make our commitment to follow Christ, we're making a commitment to follow Christ. There is this um, commitment, and we will have them on the screen next week as an entire uh, group of confirmants say, um, I choose Christ as my Savior to live for him and in him uh, for all that is good and all that is right. There's also this uh, commitment to resist evil and injustice and oppression and, and everything that gets in the way of the things that, that God uh, dreams for us. Uh, there's a commitment to, to serve God with, or, or to serve God in and through this church uh, with our prayers. We're going to talk about all of this today in just a few minutes in our confirmation class, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and, and our witness, um, and, and to do that together. And so if you're, if you're good with all of that, you can just <laughs> say, I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and now the rest of us, I think, are going to respond respond to that and essentially say the same thing. So we give we thanks, thanks for, for all, all that God, God has already given you. And we, and we welcome, welcome you in Christian, Christian love as, as members, members together, together with, with you in, in the body of Christ and in this congregation of First United Methodist Church of Waynesville. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our, our prayers, prayers, our presence, our gifts, our, gifts, our service, and, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So now may the God of all grace and peace and glory be with you. God bless you and thank you for journeying with us. Yes, let's welcome them. Let's see them. Thanks.
are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free. But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me well, I want to thank you all for coming today um, And you notice in this letter that, that Paul wrote to Timothy He says, join me in this proclamation of the gospel, in, in this amazing calling that God has for us, that Paul says, join me in suffering for the gospel while he's in prison, which is just this reminder that, that it costs us something to follow this dream. I'm, I'm sure things have been said earlier in this service, but I only get here at the end of this service. So I, I just want to say, you know, on Memorial Day weekend, uh, we remember those who made a, a, an amazing sacrifice. And I know that it, that impacts a lot of you, um, family members, friends. It makes me appreciate those of you who have served um, in, in the, our armed forces because you're fighting for something. Um, you know, we, 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 we say them uh, in cliche fashion for, for liberty and for freedom, but it's really for people. And it's not just for the people in our country, but it's the, it's the people uh, that God has created around this globe who deserve community and life and all things good. And so thank you for that. Um, God bless you and heal you as, as you grieve today, if you are grieving. God calls us to an amazing thing, and I'm excited that we get to be together in that. So may we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the force of the living God. Amen. Yeah.